new month. We have a new topic for these lives. And um, instead of answering this question in one session, I'm probably going to have to spread it out over seven sessions. And that topic is special considerations for peri to post menopausal women. Um, and kind of beyond the obvious, it's a fitness class situation, but these women also want to be assessed and they want to see that the work they're doing is working. So um, every week when we discuss these special considerations, we'll also discuss how to assess it and how you know it's improving, why it's important. Um, and I think that's all the things we're going to discuss. So let's get started. Now, before I give you today's special consideration, I want you to think real careful right now and run a quick audit just in your brain about on all the women sort of 40 years older and over and tell me how many of them have shoulder problems. <laughs> Like, is it a thing in your gym that the 40 plus year old women get shoulder problems just sort of randomly and suddenly? In my gyms and in my experience, it was a lot. It was such a big pattern that I went out looking for answers. Um, and it doesn't seem to matter when I'm looking at these women. You know, the thing that binds them together is the fact they're 40 plus. It doesn't seem to matter how fit they are, how often they train, how good their posture is, how flexible they are. It's just their age group and the fact they're female. And I found a statistic that um, talked about rotator cuff injuries affecting primarily women, specifically postmenopausal women. And it's suspected in this particular study that it's the hormones that are responsible for this specific injury. And here's why. So, you know, your 35 to 40 year old women, they're not postmenopausal yet they're in a state of perimenopause which means there's a fluctuating but gradually decreasing um, levels of estrogen and progesterone now it's kind of like a hormonal roller coaster the ovaries are shutting down um, other hormones fly high to compensate so your follicle stimulating hormone gets jacked when your um, ovaries are starting to shut down that has that actually works on other parts of your body too they're not specific to just your reproductive systems so you might notice you run hot or you might get a shoulder injury now occasionally in this process there are bursts of energy from the ovaries so you will have days and they will be random where your estrogen is high and you will have days where it is low you will have months where you ovulate and have a lovely um, increase in temperature indicating your progesterone is, is rising and you'll have other months where there's this sort of flat line with a little <laughs> that says you got a cough of progesterone. It's not necessarily predictable and why this matters is not because you're fertile or not fertile, it's because estrogen has a role in ligament and tendon um, suppleness okay so if you are low estrogen and it's shutting down your tendons and ligaments will get stiffer that puts you in a place where you might expect your arm to do this and you go to do it and you pull a muscle because it's too stiff you're low estrogen and then on any given day you might be higher estrogen which could make you less stable um, and make it easier to sprain your muscles, roll your ankle, etc., etc., etc. So that happens to women who are menstruating regularly around ovulation, and they know it's going to happen then. But for women going through perimenopause, it could happen any time, um, and that makes training this population, or, or a special consideration for training this population, is looking after their ligaments and their tendons. So you want to train those ligaments and tendons for stability. Um, you want to train them for strength as well uh, and mobility. So mo mobility is essentially flexibility with control. Um, so we need to be careful with sudden changes of direction and end range movement. 
Now, I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying be careful. So it just might be in a controlled environment you choose to do these things. So at menopause, menopause is 12 months without a period. Um, and women's estrogen levels stabilize, but at a much lower place, which means um, their ability to make muscle and bone is dramatically reduced and the stiffness of her ligaments and tendons increases. Okay, so my first thing to look at and my first special consideration is look for changes in her range of motion. If you can work her mobility exercise into her warm up, then you may see or start to recognize patterns and start to see when she's stiffer than usual or when she's more lax than usual and tweak your training as a result. If she's already postmenopausal, then we've just got to treat her joints, particularly her shoulders with care. So assessments for your, for a shoulder would include posture, just a standing posture test where you look at her body's alignment. Um, shoulder stability, you would want to um, test as well. You can do that either, you know, with the little um, balls against the wall, or I like to do them with um, hula hoops because then you can sort of see she keeps the hula hoop going in a variety of places right and then you also want to assess her shoulder mobility so one of my favorite ones for this is wall angel so you're, you're up against the wall you're doing the cactus arm you got to keep the lower back against the wall keep the shoulders against the wall keep the elbows and the wrists and then you see how far she can go um, but there's also sort of stuff you can do on the foam rollers, like Pilates style arm movements to test the shoulder mobility. Um, if you've got some great ones, like please post or comment on this post with your nuggets of gold, because the more we learn together, the better. Um, so that's number one. I hope you enjoy this journey. It's going to take us through the next couple of months, likely. Um, Special consideration for your peri and postmenopausal women, ligament and tendon health. Okay, strength, stability, posture, mobility. I will see you next week with my next nugget. Have a good afternoon.